Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about the latest book I read, Nickel and Dimed, by Barbara Ehrenreich. I hope I'm saying that correct. She seems to be a nice lady and I don't want to mask her name. And yes, I have gloves on my hands because it's 58 degrees in here. I have not yet closed up my windows and turned the heat on. I'll be doing that this weekend. And I have no glasses because they broke last night and my work glasses are incredibly glary. So, um, this book, in my opinion, should be required reading for every high school senior in America. In addition, we should ship a copy of it to every single Republican cheap labor conservative in the nation and make them read it. Because this is a wonderful indictment of how hardworking, earnest Americans doing their best cannot live above the poverty line. It's interesting, it's informative, it's darn depressing. Now, I think that after my parents got divorced for a very short period of time, my family could have been con considered the working poor. I am not working poor, but I'm only one step away. My wife and I get by, but not by much. We have, a, we have credit card debt, but not as much as most Americans. We owe money on her car and lots of money on her college loans. But we get by, and I'm still able to afford my gaming books on occasion, particularly if I buy cheap ones. A gaming book, for the most time, most part for me, is worth about one hour of my time from work. I can justify that every, you know, once a month or twice a month. This book, the author, leaves her life behind and goes out to spend a month in three different locations living as a hourly worker. First, first in Key West, Florida, because that's where she lives. She just basically left her house and her, her boyfriend behind and um, she had to find her own place to live, her own food, cover all her own bills, everything. The only thing she cut herself some slack was that she got a rent a wreck um, to uh, simulate having a used car and that is something that she already had one because that's not un completely unreasonable um, easy because I've had you know old beat up cars myself. Uh, and she tried desperately to hold down two jobs. Didn't work well. Um, then she went to uh, Portland, Maine. And she lived in Old Orchard Beach, places that are very familiar to me. I've been to Old Orchard Beach many times. It was kind of weird to have her talking about places that I recognize, that, that, that I know. Um, and she tried to be a maid. Looking for the working for one of those maid, you know, big corporate chain maid services, and things didn't go well. And then her last was in Minnesota, where she worked for Walmart of all people. And I'm real shocked there. Working for Walmart, you couldn't live on their wage. Now this book is also full of copious footnotes, all kinds of footnotes, telling the reader where she got her information from, the statistics she's basing them on, the studies that were done the laws that are made reference to, so it's very thoroughly researched and I appreciate that. I also appreciate the fact that the footnotes are at the end of the page that the comment is on. I hate books that have all their footnotes in the back. I am not going to stop in the middle of a chapter, particularly because I'm reading at work, and waste my precious break flipping to the back of a book so I can see the notes. I want them at the bottom of the page. If you're making the comment there, then the comment it needs to needs a footnote. It must be important enough to put it at the bottom of the page. Otherwise, don't give me a footnote. Just put a list of information at the back of the book, and I could read if I chose to. But if you want to link something to that paragraph, put it at the bottom of the page. I cannot recommend this book highly enough for anybody who has ever been either poor or is in a position that they've never been poor. Is it'll let you see with the world what it's like. People who really try and they can't because in America the, cons the cheap labor conservatives have for the last 40 years tried to turn America into a third world nation. Desperately trying to create a huge class of peasants compromising about 90% of our population with a small percentage of 
upper class business types and then the one percent at top who own everything cheap labor conservatives have been trying to turn America into a feudal fiefdom for decades and I'm tired of it really tired of it and I vote accordingly I vote for Democrats I don't even particularly like quite frequently just because they're not Republicans and and while they're lying cheating bastards they're at least ashamed of it the cheap labor conservatives they're not ashamed of it at all I once had heard a comment online where I said that cheap labor conservatives would be happiest if the poor would just quietly die in the, in the alleys and the person corrected me and said no cheap labor conservatives want the poor to be dying in the middle of the streets so they can watch because if they can't the entertainment value is spoiled this book addresses that topic that good well-meaning hard-working Americans can't survive in our nation because cheap labor conservatives have stacked the deck against them.